Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be covering the Reflectance channel in Cinema 4D. And uh, this is the few examples that I made for you guys, and I will be explaining uh, each one and how it was made. So let's just get started. A uh, quick overview in the scene. I just have three different spheres uh, set to three different materials. And I have this floor that's set to another uh, material that's different from the spheres as well. Just to give you more examples of the Reflectance channel. And uh, I just have one light set up and a basic HDRI image and obviously the backdrop, uh, the basic floor. And that's about it. And uh, another thing in uh, uh, rendering settings, I have a global illumination and uh, it's set to physical render. And that's pretty much it. So let me just go over the, the basics of uh, the reflectance channel. Uh, basically, you know, for this channel, you have, you, you do want like some kind of environment or lights or other objects around your uh, main object because you know uh, reflectance channel is all about reflecting other things around it so if you just have one object sitting in, in, in the middle of your scene and you don't have any environment you don't have any lights you know nothing's gonna be reflecting and uh, your object is gonna be black especially if you're going for something you know like chrome or uh, anything metallic it needs some kind of environment to work properly so basic you know the basic thing about the reflectance channel is you have these options right here that you can add on top and that they all you know give different results a lot of people go for Beckman or GGX as their favorite thing it's kinda like more uh, you know real life looking materials you know reflects really good and uh, you have uh, these uh, fake uh, I wouldn't say fake but it's kinda like you know speculars that are not really realistic you can set them up and I'll show you like I did in this blue material you can just stack them up and uh, you know, choose how wide it's going to be and so on. But basically, you know, these these four, the Beckman, GGX, Pong, and Ward, it's, it's, they're all kind of the same. And uh, I'll put a little image on the screen, as you can see. It's just the, the light reflects differently, and uh, the way the light falls off is a little bit different. But they're basically kind of the same. It just depends where, you, where you're going after. And this is pretty much uh, your layer stack. So what you can do in here, you, you can add, you know, as many reflecting... Uh, materials as you want and you can play with the uh, you know different channels the overlays and stuff and so on and uh, you also have your global uh, controller for how much do you want to be reflecting you know 100 percent 22 percent and so on so a good way to do this is uh, you know your layer one would be 100 percent the next layer would be uh, set to additive and you maybe set it to 80 percent the end the next one and so on and you would just stack you know all kinds of different effects either speculars or if you want to just work with Beckman by itself and uh, maybe throw some kind of texture on it that, that's that's all up to you and uh, same thing here you have your global controls for uh, speculars and uh, reflections if you go down the list uh, you can you know set what kind of uh, reflections do you want like same thing is here but you can you know change your mind and uh, set it back to something else if you for example you if you in here, if you added uh, GGX, and then you know you, you decided, oh, I don't want to use GGX in here, you can change it to something else. And uh, and this option right here, it just different modes that you can set it to. You know, you can set it to metal, you can set it to additive, uh, maximum, and average. The best option it would be additive. It gives the most realistic results. So as you can see, this is kind of like a, you know diffused version of the reflections. This is even more diffused, you know, additive is really kind of like a clear coat on top and your metals is, you know, it's good for like things like copper and gold and so on. But most people just use additive mode is really good. And uh, these are your four different controls for uh, each, you know, uh, option that you choose on top here, you know, from uh, Beckman to GGX to Pong. They all have the same control, roughness, uh, reflection strength, and the specular strength, and the bump. So the roughness is, you know, how how much do you want your material to be uh, reflecting? So if it's 10%, you know, right now I have it a little bit rough. If you go really crazy over the board, it's going to be really rough material. And if you go to zero, it's going to be almost glass. So I just like to keep it around 5-10%, uh, unless I'm going for, uh, you know, clear glass or something like that. Uh, the next thing is the uh, reflectance strength. So as you can guess, this is how much do you want it to be reflecting. 
So in my case, I have uh, you know other objects around me, and I have the HDRI. So if I lower this, it's not going to catch any of the environment that I have. If I put all the way to 100, it's going to be catching all kinds of reflections from my scene, from the background to HDRI to other spheres in the scene. Uh, the speculars is really good uh, controller, and uh, you can bump it up and uh, see how much you know the light is catching on things like your edges. On the sphere, it's really hard to see, but if you have things like uh, cubes, uh, cylinders, and so on, your speculars will be catching on those uh, edges. So this would be the controller to control uh, how much uh, reflection the, your edges are catching. So in this case, I will, I'm going to keep it at 10%. And then you have your bump. It's pretty much the imperfections on the surface. So if you go in here, I have uh, my this example, the blue sphere. Uh, it's set to... Uh, the bump is really set to like 5%, I think, and it's not as uh, clear-coated as the as the red one. I'll show you in a second. But your bump is pretty much the imperfections in the surface. So let me just show you real quick what you can do. You can uh, load up a image uh, straight to there, or you can uh, go to custom bump or custom normal and uh, load up, you know, maybe something like noise. And as you can see, uh, the reflection gets rough and uh, you have the controller for uh, the reflections here. If you want it to go negative, you can go negative. If you want to go positive, you can go positive. With this material, I'll just keep it uh, the way I had it because I already have an example with the bump in this one. So I'll just show you in a second. Okay, the next thing is the layer color. This is uh, what kind of reflections do you want it to be casting. Uh, so in my case, I have it set to white. Sometimes if your uh, base color is set to maybe red, you can uh, probably uh, set your reflection to, uh, you know, something close to uh, red, but not really. You know, so most people go for white. I usually like to dim it down a little bit, maybe give it some kind of red, and just I don't know. It just looks nicer in my opinion. But you can obviously, you know, get artistic and set it to any color that you want. Okay, going down the list, and uh, you can obviously load up a texture in here as well. So let me just close this tab. Next one is masking. So what you can do uh, is mask out the reflections. It's kind of like uh, Fresnel. You get to control uh, where it's reflecting. Maybe on the left it's reflecting, on the right it's not. So a good way to uh, control that is use gradients. As you can see right here. Oh, let, me, let me undo that. So on the, on the right side where the white is, it's reflecting. On the left side, it's not reflecting at all. You're able to control uh, where it's reflecting and where it's not reflecting in the masking section and uh, you can load up uh, anything you want you know maybe noise maybe like I did gradient or maybe you want to do Fresnel it's up to you but masking is kind of like Photoshop you're just masking you know the reflections in this channel Fresnel is uh, you know what kind of it depends where you're going after I know in this case I went for copper and uh, my IOR is set but if you go for you know none it's going to be uh, not as realistic, but if you're going for something specific, you can choose what kind of uh, you know, material you're going after. Maybe it's a metal, maybe it's plastic, and uh, you can load up your Fresnel in here and control it physically. Or you can go with the presets that they have in here, and uh, obviously you can invert uh, the reflections if you wanted to. And the last thing is the sampling. I never really mess around with this, but if you have any... Uh, problems with the color or uh, the way it's cutting off you get to control it here and uh, that's pretty much it so uh, this is the three materials I have in this one uh, we do have a little bit of bump going on this is this is what I did uh, the roughness is set to zero uh, speculars to 30 percent and uh, the color is set to blue let me just pull up the render uh, the picture viewer so you can get a better idea what it looks like Okay, let me just zoom in here. Let me make this smaller. All right, guys. So as you can see, uh, when you load up uh, noise in your uh, uh, the bump channel and the custom bump channel, this is the result you get. If nothing was in here, uh, it would be 100% reflective. That's what I have said right here, and uh, and the color would obviously be blue. So the reason I did the bump is just to show you what you can do with the uh, in, inside your uh, 
custom bump map. You can load up any image you want, maybe gradient, maybe bump, or you know any other effect that you you want to choose. Uh, for this one, guys, for this example, uh, I just I didn't use any you know uh, Beckman GGX. I just used pure uh, stacking mode with different uh, speculars. So as you can see, uh, it starts with the really dark blue, and as you can see around the sphere. The next one is a uh, lighter blue, as you can see it's in the middle of the sphere. And uh, uh, the last specular is uh, almost close to white, really light blue, and this is your dot in the middle. So what you can do is you can stack different speculars on top, and then if you want you can also obviously add Beckman on top, and maybe uh, change it to additive, and so on. And uh, it will you know, act accordingly, you can set it to additive here as well. And as you can see, it acts almost like a clear coat. Let me just make this uh, bigger so you can see. So there you go. So this is uh, without Beckman, and this is with Beckman. So it acts almost like a clear coat on top. It, it can also change the uh, you know the stacking order of the layers, and it does it does matter in this case nothing really changing, but it does matter how you stack them. And I also have it set to 100%, 90, 80, and five. So there's kind of like a fall off effect going on and it just looks realistic and better. And other than that, I have, uh, for, for the type, I have blend selected for this one and uh, it's set to additive. And for this one, that's about it. I just wanted to show you an example of uh, the stack in order of different speculars and maybe a Beckman or GGX on top. And uh, for this last one, guys, I just have it set to 100% reflective. And uh, the roughness set to ten percent, so it's not hundred percent rough. It's uh, I mean it's not hundred percent reflective like this. It just gives like a little bit of uh, roughness to it. How it's reflecting is uh, a little bit blurred, and uh, the color is like I said. I like to set it to close to the base color. So in my case, it's red. So I put it just you know tiny bit to the right of the white, just to give it a little different effect. And uh, for the Fresnel. For this one, I have it set to copper, and you can try all kinds of options, and obviously you can control how strong you want it to be. And your IOR, guys, is uh, pretty much the number of uh, how how much do you want it to be reflecting around it. So, you know, IOR of 1.35 gives you this result. If you go for IOR, you know, 5 or 10, it can be, like, almost close to chrome, really reflective. If you go, you know, below 3.5, you might get, like, uh, concrete reflecting. Uh, effect and so on so your IOR really matters in here too if you if you want to play around with that uh, and let me see if anything else I missed on oh, from my floor it just another example and as you can see let me zoom out for the floor it's almost uh, I think I used uh, ward yeah and uh, it's kind of like uh, it's mostly used for metals and stuff but you can obviously get almost the same effect with GGX or Beckman as well it just all depends how you set it up, but it's basically, uh, I just have the base color set to uh, this dark uh, yellow, and uh, all I have here is uh, so a selected word, and it's uh, set to additive. You can play around these modes, and you know, they all do different thing, but it doesn't change that much. And you can play around, obviously, with roughness. I have it set, in this case, to 20%, so this is the result you get. You can see uh, how it's reflecting. It's really dimmed and diffused, and uh, you know the specular strength and so on. And there's nothing really else going on. So that's pretty much it, guys. That really covers the reflectance channel. Uh, hopefully, this video helped you in any way. Subscribe for more videos. I will be covering uh, upcoming channels in the next few videos, like uh, environment fog, bump, and normal. And when I finish with this series, I will be covering uh, how to make a realistic material from scratch. Anyway guys, uh, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.